Hello and welcome to a super special Age of Sigmar classic Hammers of Sigmar tutorial. So the Hammers of Sigmar are the poster boys for the Stormcast Eternals, so basically the Ultramarines of Age of Sigmar, and these models, the Annihilators and Hillators, um, are chunky as all hell and an absolute pleasure to paint. I cannot say how much I enjoy painting this, especially the shield. The shield is just wonderful. Um, this tutorial is packed with a load of useful hints and tips and tricks for achieving absolute max quality metallic paint jobs in the smallest time possible. Do feel free to skip the base coating one if you're not particularly interested in that or if you can use an airbrush or retributor armor spray. I do think it's a useful skill to have in your arsenal. And then towards the end of the tutorial, we've got a ultimate hack, which lets you turn a, um, a retributor armor base coat and pretty much finished section of a model with one wash into a silver base coat. It's pretty clever, even if I say so myself, um, which means that you can just paint all of the model in exactly the same way and then nip out a couple of bits. It is so convenient and is an amazing time saver. And also it helps you keep a nice depth in, uh, in the silver sections as well as in the gold sections. So I think the end result on this was really, really solid. This, you know, it, they've chosen it for good reason. It's a very lovely paint scheme anyway. Gold and blue look super regal, super classic. And uh, there's not too many little details on this. So once you've done the armor well, you're pretty much done. Anyway, that's it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification to be notified for more Dominion content. And very importantly, let us know below what uh you know what stormcast chamber you'd like to see us painting next or what you would like to see us painting next from dominion i am going hell for leather here and there will be a lot of dominion content coming up very soon base kicking wise i have a small hair you could use a medium also and you'll notice from the shape of this even though it looks really clean because i cleaned it recently it's been worn out um that is because I abuse this one a lot with metallics and then have reserved it for base coating duties. So if you don't need any help learning how to base coat, then by all means skip this and move on to the next step. But I do think there is something here for everyone to learn. I'll show you on the shield. So I'm gonna make my brush far wetter than normal. You can use the dampening pad or because it really is quite a lot of water you'll be using here. You can put some on your palette and sneak a bit of that. This brush getting oversaturated is why it's uh, worn the way it has actually. If you make brushes too wet that are dry brushes, they don't particularly appreciate it. So as you can see, Doom Bull and Retributor are just made to go with each other. Wonderful color you make there. I'm gonna mix them around 50-50, get a fair bit of it, and then grab our shield, which is gonna be quite difficult actually. And we're gonna smush stipple this base coat. So it's important for it to be wet means you won't go too thick anywhere and you can smush it about or you can press it in either is fine so over black it might take a little bit you'll find this going easier over gray if you've got mechanica standard gray or any gray spray or you know, airbrush or whatever i'm just going to do two coats like this we will get super solid coverage especially with that retributor in there and especially after the first coat so i'll do that all over you can airbrush it if you want but this is one way that you can go about doing it mostly for the doubters, but uh, I know what it's like in videos when someone says, just do this twice and it works really well. That's the shield with it done twice. It looks so much more shiny. And I just wanted to show you what a patchy first coat can help you get as a second coat. What we should see here is pretty much perfect coverage on the second coat. So make sure that you are fairly diluted. You got, you got a fair bit of moisture in there, but that's how much of a difference that first coat makes. One of the bonuses of stippling is I'll go wrong on purpose here. Hopefully this doesn't screw me up in the long term. But in, if you're going to do traditional wiping or smushing or however you want to call it, you end up collecting in the recesses like spreading butter on toast. So if you stipple, you get the same amount of coverage on every surface and that also dramatically decreases uh, drying time because it means that you don't have some huge drift or tide of paint built up in a recess which isn't getting much air to, to help it dry out anyway so yep that is it base coating by brush really can be super super fast for now i'm going to pop the shield back on and we're going to wash the entire thing now obviously the shield's in the way but 
I don't want to spend a load of time painting stuff I'm not going to be able to see and I think it's useful information I can always pull it off um, so yeah let's rock on got the dish out now mixing washes is something that I think people or, or mixing in general is something I think people find more intimidating than it needs to be so what we're going to do here is grab a bit of the armor shade you can swap that for Riquel and Flesh Shade Gloss if you want, it doesn't particularly matter. I would do that if I had it, but I don't. Using a big brush here, so it's quite a lot. Two drops of that, and then we're just going to add in Riquel and Flesh Shade until we're happy with it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's a three to one ratio of Reclam Flesh Shade to the Cryptic Armour Shade Gloss. I will put a little bit of medium in there and then we'll wash that all over. So if people are interested in exact ratios, that's probably three to one to one. And what we've ended up with, normally I do this in a normal palette, but I wanna be able to bring it right up to the camera. It is a kind of rich, dark, slightly ready and that's from the Requin Flesh Shade wash. Let's, let's not beat around the bush. First things first, let's just hit this shield up. Absolute magic. Now, unfortunately though this detail is going to get painted blue but there's nothing we can do about that. Okay so normal uh, high level washing tips. Keep your model at the same orientation so don't you know don't screw around with turning it upside down be really mindful of pulling you can specifically introduce it dotting rivets and stuff but really do be careful that it's going to want to run in one direction so you're probably only going to have to pick it up from specific areas towards the bottom of your pieces but, uh, if we hold these in mind we will get a far higher quality job with a wash than we would do otherwise and this is why some contrast minis uh, you know that have had the same steps look far better than others and it's because people have paid attention to this type of stuff as they work so be, be prepared to go back to your zones paint everything zone by zone and uh, you'll get a far better job as a result of that okay so before we add in our brighter gold which could be your Rikama, if you don't have the elf gold that i'm using from scale 75 i'm just going to test out how pure retributor looks now brush wise here i've got a medium Start somewhere forgiving, so that will be his chainmail skirt. And then go everywhere else, and I mean everywhere. Absolutely every single bit, every angle, not from the top or the bottom or anything. Get every single bit of the model. Don't worry if you don't have elven gold, I think it's called or elf gold from scale color, you could use auric armor gold taking a similar approach to the previous step, just slightly lighter. At this point, grab a little of our silver. Now, if you're using a silver that is anywhere near as potent as the one that I'm using, do exercise some care here, because we want to keep this guy gold. That is the point of doing him in the scheme that we're doing him in. So really do. take a lot of care. You can see I'm mixing it in the same area of my palette as I was working on previously. That's going to help me make sure that I've not gone a step too far. Work it into the brush. Start on the shield. So we have an optional repeated step here. I've just tested out the wash on the shield again. And I think that looks pretty amazing. Really like that. So if you can see it next to the dude, it just adds a little bit more depth to the piece, which I think is fantastic. I've also put it on his chainmail skirt. So I'm gonna rock it over with another wash. I'm gonna keep this one fairly thin and be quite careful with it, but I do think what it adds to the model is gonna be well worth it. Now, if you want, you might be able to notice on this little bit here, uh, you can go for one more final silvery dry brush. I've done it on the shield, looks quite nice. Um, entirely up to you. It just depends how much you want your edges to stand out and how gold you want your guy to be in. If you want any little dots or aspects of silver on there, I think 
it's uh, it's easy to get tempted into these because each of these stages only takes like 30 seconds but they are quite a rewarding 30 seconds if you are going to do it so once I've whisked around that, my arm is going to be done. I'm going to have to work out how I'm going to do the blue. We have our color reference in front of us, and we're going to be doing this pretty traditionally. So uh, this is going to be a return to traditional base coating and layering, I guess. Maybe we'll pop a wash down. I've put a quick uh, contrast medium coat over this guy if you're wondering why he looks a little bit more glossy than he was. Um, I think you could definitely benefit from putting maybe even a gloss, but a satin varnish down on this because it does make the armor that little bit more shiny. I've grabbed some Cantor blue and I'm just going to base coat all of the relevant parts. There's not too many of them on this model, which is quite helpful. Do take your time with this because we've put a lot of effort into the gold. It's the most timely part of the model and we definitely don't want to ruin that. So no rushing. Quick tip if you are ever trying to do super horrible fiddly bits like get inside this little section here. I'll just drop some water there, that one there. So the way that I approach this is even using a nice big brush, some of it's got a good point, can be a case I've gone and clean my brush and now I'm going to grab some nicely diluted paint. I'm not going to mix it into the bristles, it's just staying on the very end. Then what you can do, that's even too much, is just pick up a little dot from the very tip which makes it harder to make mistakes elsewhere which is exactly where I want my hand to be and then with it just on the tip it's easier to fill in those areas without the possibility of spilling elsewhere so as you can see there let's see where the blue is got the top like three millimeters of my brush is all the place that the paint is on so I don't paint all of it like that obviously but if you do need to nip in there or you know get little nooks and crannies just having the tip covered is a really good way to make sure that it's much more difficult to make mistakes elsewhere. We've base coated with a couple of uh, fairly carefully chosen colors around the model. The straps are word bearers red, which is nice and warm. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a brownie red. We've got screamer pink on the wrappings for the weapon. And then of course we've got our cantor blue on the shoulder panels. Now, I wanna show you some color wheel magic here. So we want these to end up silver as per the artwork. Uh, rather than having to paint them silver, what we're going to do, check out the color wheel. They are kind of yellowy, orangey gold. Opposite that is blue. So what we can do is we can actually wash them with a the blue and that will knock back the yellow within the gold. So this hasn't been painted anymore with silver. I've just washed it twice with Drakenhof Nightshade. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking that wash all around the model on all of the sections that I've just spoken about. We're going to be using it to knock things back. And we're also going to use it right in the middle of the shield. So I'll show you how that'll look now. Uh, we've got some of our Drakenhof and you can dilute it or even, even add in non oil if you wish. And I'm just going to fill in the little zones. Now this is a lot more forgiving than using a normal paint just because of the nature of washes. pretty much impossible to make a mistake at this point. And given that we're aiming for these to be dark silver and uh, on the artwork, this kind of sun pattern is silver, I think we can just give it a quick dry brush and then repeat this step and we'll be absolutely groovy. Time for a quick polish on the silver sections, which have turned out really well. Check out the hammer. Obviously there's a hint of gold going on there, but I'm absolutely fine with that. Start on the shields, because I said about the selective one I'm gonna do. So hitting that outside rim, the star-shaped lightning, whatever it is. And then also the recessed details. Now because that rim has been washed with the blue, it's pretty much universally silver now, and we can still hit the entire thing. That's just cheating, isn't it? Amazing. Big fan of hobby cheating. Shout out to Vince. Hammer, same treatment. Scales, same treatment. There you go, you get the idea. Super, super easy. You can paint the entirety of your model one way, be absolutely fine, and then we even if we're careful, we can highlight a couple of chest details as well. I'm gonna fill in these blanks with a repeat of Cantor Blue and hit it with an edge of maybe Teclis Blue or something. And um, that will pretty much be it. 
edge the um, edge the belt, and uh, we'll be groovy. I like this one a lot. The model really, really helps. These, these models paint themselves if you're using texture-based techniques. So I think they're a particularly good recipient for any dry brushing or any washing and you know contrast like that. Of course, you can lay them up and this guy would definitely benefit from an edge highlight extremely efficiently. I think, you know, five more minutes and you take that from, you know, solid, solid army level to tip top army level, um, or even, you know, display or however you want to put it. Really enjoyable to paint, cannot, overstate that enough they are absolutely a pleasure to paint not too bad to build a bit more difficult than the more simple smaller stormcast from the kit which are amazing to build these are the winners as far as painting enjoyment goes the efficiency of them is nuts um, that's it if you've got any questions about how we tackle that let us know if you want to know any more of the theory behind it uh, any question is okay, just drop them all below. And if you have suggestions on what you'd like to see next from Dominion, from the box, or you know, from um, what Stormcast chamber you'd like to see us painting, we put up a little question uh, on the community section of the AO channel recently, and the variety is huge. I don't know how we get, we'll, we'll probably pick, you know, we'll pick the top five most requested from that and put up a poll or something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, I am super excited for the content that we can release around Dominion. The minis are fantastic. I don't want to build some of them, but we'll get over it. <laughs> um, and I don't think this is a very beginner friendly box as far as assembly goes as an, as an aside. I just, I don't think it's particularly well gauged for that. However, if you are into your painting and modeling, um, if you're a beginner, don't worry, just persevere. It'll be all right and the painting will be a pleasure. Um, but otherwise, you know, get stuck in. The models are absolutely, you know, like joyous to paint the ones that I've looked at so far and the ones that I have put some paint on. Um, so yeah, hopefully there's more of that to come. I'll stop waffling. I'm into this box. I think it's really cool. You probably got that from the tutorial anyway, but uh, yeah, pop your suggestions below and we will catch you in the next video.